two five tribe our monthly training session and i've got a good one for you um it's going to be called how to position yourself as the expert recruiter not a expert the expert recruiter within your chosen niche so look let's get straight into this as a recruiter or recruitment business owner why would you want to position yourself as an expert the answer is simple people trust experts and as every successful recruiter will tell you individuals clients and candidates want to do business with people that they know like and trust it doesn't matter whether you specialize in placing barristers or hairy bummed builders uh, architects or zimmer frame designers being seen as an expert within your niche will help your recruitment business and your career grow now i found that the very best way to brand yourself as a recruitment expert is by using a 12-step strategy that leverages social media and this includes linkedin twitter facebook youtube and blogs now there are other ways but these 12 are the ones that i want to introduce you to today they're the easiest ones for us to kick off with and then we can introduce you to other ways of doing it so look what you're going to learn today is seven reasons why you must position yourself as the go-to expert within your niche and then we're going to um, follow up with 12 of my favorite methods to make that happen so if you're ready let's dive in let's look at why position yourself as an expert now in every buying decision be it I don't know hiring a recruitment consultant or finding a good plumber we all want experts right we want someone who appears to have a proven solution and not someone who may waste our time and our money but that's the bird's eye view of things that's the bigger picture i prefer to dig into the details so let's go digging the first reason that i want you or that you must actually position yourself as an expert recruiter is to stand out in a crowded market um you know without attention no business can survive the problem is that you're probably not alone in your market am i right yes in fact you're probably one fish in the entire ocean of recruitment consultants so how do you stand out you have to become the go-to expert recruiter and by establishing your brand as the obvious choice for those who are choosy you rise above the noise you rise above the sameness you rise above the mediocrity it happens every single time and you become the shining star amongst that great big entire night sky number two i want you to become the prize humans want what they can't or what's difficult to get or what's difficult to have and as you become the recognized expert you gain prestige and popularity becoming the prize to be won by your clients and your candidates no longer do you have to chase leads instead they are going to clamor and trip over themselves to come and work with you the other thing is i want you to get media attention okay open up any newspaper and scan or scan any news blog and you're going to see references to experts up and down the page they're essential to media and when journalists develop a story or an article they need quotations they need opinions they need facts they need findings from people like you and i who know the topic better than anyone else and so they turn to experts and you as recruiters you're perfectly placed because you're speaking to that market your niche every single day of the week so you know who the movers and shakers are you know the companies that are expanding you know the high demand job titles you know the companies that are perhaps shrinking and uh, uh, you know and, and, and um, retrenching you know all of that stuff and reporters journalists bloggers will really value your opinion they'll seek you out as an expert the fourth reason why you've got to do it is we are hardwired to listen to authority figures you know think about it we trust people that wear doctor's coats or surgeons i don't know uniforms or uh you know bank managers in a suit maybe not bank managers now but 
Um, we trust people, you know, go to a court and if a barrister or the judge has got a wig on, we trust these people. Um, maybe we shouldn't blindly, but we do, okay? We're hardwired to listen to authority figures. And by wrapping your particular message in the authority that expert positioning brings, your information will not only get attention, but it will get absorbed and used by your clients and candidates and your knowledge will be respected enough to break through the noise and the clutter and deliver tangible results now the other thing is you will also get a chance to charge higher fees let's take two recruiters kim and jane kim is a jill of all trades offering everything from i don't know perm to temp uh, industrial, catering, commercial, professional, you name it, uh, Kim does it, all right? Jane, on the other hand, places legal secretaries, nothing more, nothing less. Who do you think is going to charge more? It's obvious. Because Jane only does one thing, we assume that she's going to do it better than Kim. And in turn, we expect to pay more for the extra knowledge, the know-how, the experience and the quality that Jane brings. And the same is true for you. When you're seen as an expert, people expect to pay for the extra value, allowing you to charge what you're really worth. And what do I mean by that? It's higher fees or full fee, okay? So if you haven't been charging full fee for the last, I don't know, 12, 18 months, maybe even five years, now is the opportunity as an expert, charge full fee and in fact, charge premium push for exclusivity, push for retained business, because that's what experts are able to command. Another reason why, I'm giving you all these reasons why you should and you must position yourself as experts. The same tendencies that draw people to an expert, i.e. clients and candidates, also attract potential business partners. So if you wanna rapidly grow your recruitment business or your desk, you need to partner with other authorities, other experts within your niche. Now, arranging these partnerships, however, isn't always easy unless you're seen as a fellow expert. So in that case, your positioning instantly grants you credibility and respect, opening the door to their audiences and new opportunities. So in my example, for example, sorry, in my instance, as an example, when I wrote my book, Recruitment Blueprint, Amazon number one bestseller, it was, I was amazed, you know, I was really amazed that uh, I could write a book. I've been threatening for years. I was amazed that we were able to promote it and get it to number one in Amazon, I think in three categories in less than 10, 15 days. But I was more amazed at the number of inbound inquiries that I had from other authors, from other experts within our niche, in the recruitment niche, approaching me and saying, hey, Roy, I'd like to do something with you. Not just authors, you know, looking to ride off of my, uh, you know, tribe or following, but people with genuine business opportunities asking me to, you know, get involved, invest or whatever. Um, but that's, that comes as, as, you know, as a direct result of positioning as an expert. Now, what else? Um, the, sorry, I'm just, let me give you the next slide. Huh? Reason number seven is satisfaction and fulfillment. Now, when you commit to becoming a true expert, you're committing to much more than just getting your stuff into print or associating yourself with success. You're committing to being one of the best, if not the best within your chosen field. Now, this dedication to mastery, you know, the thing we talk about in 2-5 Tribe all the time, whilst equipping you with expert knowledge will also have a side effect, a good side effect. You're gonna be happy. Satisfaction fulfillment are natural offshoots of throwing ourselves into something that we're passionate about. 
you'll constantly be learning new stuff, new things, solving challenging problems and immersing yourself in a world that you love and you'll be the happier for it. And we looked at the seven reasons why, um, sorry, I'm so sorry, let's have a look. We looked at the seven reasons why uh, you must position yourself, but let's look at how do you position yourself, okay? This is the how-to uh, portion of, of what we're doing. And now that you know why expert positioning is important, let's, took, let's take a look at the 11 things that you can start doing today to be seen as the obvious authority within your field. Um, now, many people wait for it, but sadly, no one is going to tap you on the head with a magic wand and turn you into an expert or a guru. It's up to you. But by shining a better, a stronger, a brighter light on what you already have and filling in some gaps along the way, you can position yourself and your brand as one of the leaders in your field. I love this slide. It's Dave from Money Supermarket. Anybody outside the UK is going to absolutely wet themselves when they see this and they, oh my goodness, what's Ray Ripper showing me? This is Dave from Money Supermarket. You need to find the ad on YouTube. Um, uh, this is about owning it, okay? And I often get told by people, Roy, I'm, but I'm no expert. And sometimes this is true. Often it's not. Even after spending years specializing in a field and producing consistent results in terms of placements, I find some recruiters are very wary of standing up and uh, proclaiming themselves or asserting themselves as true experts. Now look, I know it can be scary. The pressure to deliver certainly increases when you claim expert status. And here's a tip for you. The moment you do it, you start getting people taking pot shots at you, I know. But if you're ready, if you can help your clients and candidates get the results that they're after, and I know that you are doing that now, it's time to own your own expert standing and shout it out to the world. Okay, this isn't a secret. You're not the best kept secret in your industry. Um, the second thing I want you to do is define your expertise and don't be wishy-washy about what you do, okay? Be bold, be clear. Would you rather work with the woman who says, uh, well, I guess I help people um, get more jobs and stuff like that? Or would you rather work with the one who says, I'm an expert in placing the top 5% of market access professionals within the biotech space in Northern Europe? I know which one I would rather go for. So define your expertise, set it out. It becomes, it's your elevator pitch, but what you need to do is really, as we said, number one was own it, okay? The third thing I want you to do is to create an expert hub. Now, one of the most effective ways to communicate your authority status is to create an expert website. Now, many elements are involved, but key among them are professional headshots. I'm going to say that once more, professional headshots. I get sick to the back teeth of the number of recruitment, uh, recruiter profiles that I look at on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and everything else, where the, the, the photograph used is lousy. It's taken, I don't know, five years ago, or it's taken falling drunkenly out of a nightclub or surrounding, you know, mates smoking cigars at the Epsom races or whatever it is. But it's not a professional shot. It certainly doesn't position uh, these recruiters as experts within their field. Now, if you're guilty of that right now, don't worry. I'm going to give you a pass, at least for the next 24 hours. What I do want you to do is think about investing in getting either a professional photographer or a mate of yours into the office who has got a digital SLR and get some really good professional looking shots done, well lit, set up, nice background, your branding, your logos, whatever in the background, okay? Apart from that, professional headshots, go professional design. Any of your uh, profiles, they've got those uh, kind of header profiles and wallpaper and stuff like that. Don't just go with the random. Don't go with the stuff that everyone else does. It's like, oh, I'm just going to pick a blue background. Actually, that's not a bad idea in certain uh, certain social media profiles. But get it professionally designed. And you can go to someone like, I don't know, um, pe People Per Hour or uh, what's the other one that I'm thinking about? Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E. 
double r.com fiverr.com you can get these things done for five dollars now if you don't think you're worth that investment i know you wouldn't be on this uh, this webinar with me okay you wouldn't be watching this you wouldn't be taking notes i know that you're worth five dollars i know you're worth a whole lot more than five dollars so invest in that what else do you want to do with your expert website you want to highlight your social proof numbers social proof is a massive massive uh, trigger okay it's a it's a massive influence trigger and so listing down things like the number of subscribers that you have the number of linkedin connections that you have the number of followers that you have the number of fans that you have um those sorts of things now if you're a recruitment business you know you know on everyone's linkedin profile it's like the number of connections you have well, why not make a feature of your recruitment business talking about the collective number of followers, fans, uh, connections that we have as a company specializing in this particular niche? You know, how about putting down, we're connected to over 3 million, I don't know, psychiatric nurses or whatever, if that's your specialism, within, you know, the um, uh, European space, within Europe or within the US. Put those things down because these are... This is social proof. It's like other psychiatric nurses that see that think, oh, I'm not part of that yet. I should be. All right. So people like to feel like uh, they're part of a tribe. They like to join things. And by you putting those social triggers in, social uh, proof triggers in, you'll get more and more people joining. I highlight the places that any work of yours has been featured. So any articles, any posts, any blogs that you've written for, um, any radio interviews that and we'll talk about that one in a short while but anything that you've done anywhere that your work has featured i want you to put links to uh in this expert website that you've got okay um the next thing i want you to do is to create an expert intro it's like a fanfare <laughs> The terrible fanfare. Um, now, this is really useful. Things like videos, articles, interviews, live talks, an expert intro, or in my case, I, you know, my guys, my internal team call it my bio. Um, they send this out to anyone that's going to feature me. So if I'm doing a speech, or if I'm, you know, guest blogging, or writing a piece for somebody, or a magazine, or an article, or an interview, a you know, television interview, a radio interview, they send this bio out. And it is a powerful, really powerful tool for establishing your authority with brand new audiences, as well as ingraining your expert status in the minds of, of, of your loyal uh, fans, like your customers, your clients, your candidates. So, you know, that expert story, even if your clients have heard it a hundred times, actually what does is it, it reinforces. And for brand new people, it does a thing that in NLP terms, uh, it's called pre-framing. So people that hear that stuff are pre-framed to have you as an expert, as an authority, because they've heard somebody else talk about it or it's written down, they've read it before you start speaking, pre-framing them to accept you as a, an expert, as an authority. So for example, um, in some of my videos, in fact, in a lot of my videos, what I'll do is every single video, I'll introduce myself. Hey, my name really is Roy Ripper. It's my pet kind of like intro. My name really is Roy Ripper. I'm the author of the number one best-selling book, Recruitment Blueprint, and founder of Recruitment Masterminds and 2-5 Tribe. So by putting that out there consistently, consistently, now you guys might hear that and go, oh, Roy, you're always saying the same thing. My name really is Roy Ripper. My name really is Roy Ripper. But what happens is it becomes like your catchphrase. It becomes what you're known as. And what you do is you, you're constantly just reinforcing that story, you know, that, that expert positioning story. Okay, um, and on to story, uh, let's talk about what's your story. I want you to share your credibility story. Um, your expert story is critical, okay? It's really critical. It connects you to your clients and your candidates and it establishes your authority. It inspires hope and it motivates action. Now, how do you accomplish all that with a single story? Think about it. Start by sharing your struggle to succeed. Now, what this does is it allows people to relate to you, okay? Now, before we get into this, why stories? Think about it. Stories have been around forever, 
yeah forever think about some of the most famous books story books the bible the quran the torah all of these books are stories and think about before written communication before it was written down ancient storytellers never wrote it they told it and they would travel the country let you know length and breadth of a country they would travel across continents bringing stories you guys know about fairy tales right fables adventure stories myths all of these things are stories and why are they so important because people can remember stories we love stories we you know again ingrained we're we're programmed as small children we love stories as adults we love stories if you think about your favorite films even those like high action movies they follow a really really simple uh, storyline okay really really simple storylines people love stories it illustrates points far better um you know a parable or a example or whatever uh, uh, you know it it, it it illustrates points that we're trying to make concepts we're trying to get people to understand so stories are good um what i want you to do is start telling your story uh, your struggle to succeed so you guys know in my in my thing i talk about oh yeah i grew up in brixton tough neighborhood you know friends that i used to run around with are either dead or they're in prison all right so you know people of my generation that's what happened uh, really, really tough neighborhood. I talk about my first job in recruitment. It was tough. Here's a phone. Here's a directory. Get on with it. You know, make a load of calls. Um, get a lot of rejection. And if you're still here in six months, tell us your name. You know, is that kind of that? That was my induction training that I had. So by telling people that story of struggle, you get people relating. They know then. Oh my God, he didn't just wake up and become an expert in recruitment. He's earned his spurs. I talk about my story for you know, um, how I found a solution. It's like I got fed up not making enough money as a recruiter. I got fed up with my recruitment business failing. That what I did was I went out and I found experts. I found recruiters, successful recruiters and business owners that were absolutely kicking it. And what did I do? I interviewed them. I asked them loads of questions. I was bloody annoying, even more annoying than I am now. And all I did was I just said to people, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? And I learned. And what I did was I came back to my desk and to my recruitment business and I devised a simple step-by-step -step approach to it based on everything that I'd learned. I took the best of what people taught me, the very best. I had, you know, I was fortunate. I had mentors, James Kahn, Tony Byrne, all the others, Anne Swain. Um, but I also took the stories of uh, the stories that the actual examples, the working examples of some of the very best recruiters in the world. Okay, in the world, I found the best. I interviewed them, and um, you know, my story is success leaves clues. Why, you know, reinvent the wheel? Find out what works and replicate it. That's what I did. Talk about how you found your solution. Talk about why you're an expert. Why you're perfectly positioned within your market. Maybe it's the number of candidates that you've placed. Maybe it's the number of companies that you've helped grow by your introductions. Maybe it's the impact that you've had on your marketplace. Um, and, you know, all of those things, what they do is they build a story for you. It doesn't have to be just about your certification or a specific degree or your years of experience. OK, it could be about your first hand trial and error. In my instance, it was trial and error. Things I tried and things that didn't work. Finally, I want you to share your personal stories of success because that's what people want to hear about. It's like, right, you came through the struggle, you found the solution. What's the success? Um, and, and, you know, talk about your success, but also talk about the success of your clients and candidates. How have companies grown as a result of working with you? How have candidates progressed their careers? How many people have you managed the careers of within your chosen niche? Talk about those, okay? Those are the things that are going to really mark you out. Point number six, remember it's six in 12, six out of 12 that I want to show you. Go beyond your blogs, okay? Stop hiding behind social media and get out there, all right? Here's me being stern with you. There are dozens of ways to share your message outside of blogging and tweeting and, you know, social media. But one of the most effective, in fact, probably the most effective at positioning you as an expert is public speaking. 
All right, it's out there. I, you know, I know all of you go, oh no, it's going to get, get me to public speak. All of these things that I'm giving you, these 12 uh, how to's are really big picture stuff. All right, I'm not suddenly going to say, right, here's a microphone, you're public speaking now, if you're not already. What I want you to do is get one of these and grab it and go, okay, Roy, I, I'm interested in public speaking. What's the first step? And I'll help you with it. All right. Um, whether that's working through this group or whether it's private coaching or, you know, whether it's another product or whatever that matches that, I can help you with this because this is what I do. Now, public speaking, it's taught about it. This generates obvious credibility the, the obvious credibility that comes from having an audience show up and listen to you speak but on a deeper level speaking in public elevates your status because so few people are willing to do it most of us are terrified by the idea of speaking publicly so the fact that you're able to get on stage and deliver puts you on a completely different level and just a quick bonus for you anything that you speak at all right we, you know if there was a, a program to kind of get you up public speaking start small go and do local schools and colleges and talk about recruitment do small things okay one day i'll tell you about my first speaking engagement remind me on the q a with tony Byrne, the late great tony Byrne. my first speaking engagement with 250 recruiters all in a room following the late great tony Byrne. let me tell you about that experience another time all right but the the key takeaway i want you to have with this is any of these things that you speak at i wish i remembered this because i didn't any of these things the first time you start speaking get some shots of you speaking at an event all right even if your audience is two people could be your mum right it could be your brother or your husband or your wife or whoever could be your office but what I want you to do is get somebody to take a shot of you speaking, addressing, and then put those shots on your website or on your marketing materials. And again, positioning you as a speaker. People see you speaking, you know, like this slide, they'll automatically think, oh, you know, this person speaks. This is what they do. All right. And if they suddenly book you for their annual conference of 2,000 people, then call me. I'll help you. All right. Um, point number seven. Uh, I want you to play hard to get, you know, as my grandma used to say to me, treat them mean, keep them keen. I never really took the advice, but the harder something is to get, the more we value it. It's just human nature. So while you should be available to your, you know, your customer, your clients and your candidates, you shouldn't be too available. I used to tell people, look, here's my mobile number, phone me anytime, day and night, you know, no. And it was really, this was, this is so, so important. This is the thing that, you know, kind of was the distinction between the contingency recruiter that I was and overnight going to 100% retained. Now I'm not telling you this, so I want you to go retain. I'm don't. It's like, even on a contingency market, I want you to, you know, positioning yourself as an expert gives you an air of exclusivity. You shouldn't be too available. Experts aren't available at the drop of a hat. Experts are busy. They need to be, you know, try and get into an expert's diary. You could be looking at weeks, months ahead. Now, one of the ways that you could do this, all right, really, really easily is the next time one of your clients calls you. Now, I know this is a real big ask by me, right? You're going to be going, Roy, don't ask me to do this. I want you to try and do this, right? Put a note to yourself. Put a post-it on your screen or whatever to do this. Your customer, your client calls you tomorrow and says, hey, I've got a brand new position for you. I want to give it to you. Instead of doing what I used to do, which was like, oh, that's really great. Let me take out all the details and we'll get straight. I was like, yes, I've got CVs in front of me right now. Instead of doing that, I want you to say thank you. Thank you so much for calling me. It's really, really good. I'm pleased. And your timing is perfect. I'm just completing a retained assignment for another client. If you, don't, if you don't feel comfortable with retain, maybe that's not your market, I'm just completing an exclusive, um, or high profile, a confidential, whatever you want to call it, but you know, it's got to be something high level, a higher level, uh, a critical position, a senior position, whatever it is, I'm just completing that. Your timing couldn't be more perfect. I'm finishing that today. I should be able to get yours underway first thing tomorrow morning. Let me take some details down. And what that does is it instantly, it pushes the client away. But what it says is, 
you know, they may not buy a retainer from you or give you an exclusive, but if you keep sowing that seed every time you speak to somebody, in fact, every time you talk to your audience, you sow that seed of I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. They'll start to position you as well. This isn't someone who's just waiting around for the phone to ring. This is somebody that's out there. He or she is in demand. I want some. Okay. Point number eight, I want to get media attention. I want you to get you into the media spotlight. I want to get you in print, on radio, on television, on other websites, and on blogs. Then I want you to feature any of the media pieces on your site and in your materials. Now, working with media, I know for a few people, can seem really overwhelming. So start small. Email small blogs, specialist blogs within your niche. If you're local, you know, some of you I know run recruitment businesses where it's locally targeted business local clients, local professional services, whatever, contact local radio stations or newspapers that serve small markets. Now, this is my experience, direct experience. Journalists are, are desperate for content. They're desperate for, to be able to like, you know, they've got column inches, they've got blog posts to write, or, you know, they've got radio uh, features to, to, to design. So they are crying out for content and they don't want to pay other journalists. You know, they, they do have to, but they sometimes have to pay other journalists to come up with that content for them. So when somebody local or somebody market specific comes to them and say, hey, you know what, this is the market I work in. Let me show you, send you my bio or my, you know, my, um, uh, my expert intro. Don't call it an expert intro. Uh, let me send you just a biography of some of the things that I've done, some of the other interviews that I've been involved in. Don't worry if you've never done an interview. We just don't draw attention to that. We'll put something else in there. And again, I will help you with this, all right? But you send them your bio. These are the sorts of things that I'm, you know, that, that I'm really expert on. These are the things that I know. These are the types of clients. Name some of the larger clients they may know. These are the level of candidates that I deal with. I place senior or I place highly specialized, whatever it is, but tell them what you do. Tell them your area of expertise and just say to them whenever they are looking at those types of features, please, please put you on their list. They will do. You may need to reinforce it from time to time, but it's a really, really good thing for you to do. Um, I will say to you, most often experts don't get paid for this, right? Because there's a bit of a quid pro quo. They know that by giving you coverage, you're going to get activity. But it won't be very long, uh, particularly the more expert you become, where you actually do get paid. You know, you get paid to go and do keynote speeches. You get paid sometimes for uh, blog posts that you might write. You get paid for articles. Um, you get paid for your opinion, and you'll be asked on those things. Okay. Number nine, I want you to associate with success. You know what authority and expertise is like glitter. Those who come into contact with it can't help um, but leaving with a little bit on their sleeve. Um, and you can gain the same respect and status by associating with leaders within your industry. Among other things, you can interview them, you can write guest posts for them, you can review their products, you can invite them to speak at your live or, you know, webinars like this. It's like you can get people to do that. Any of you familiar with my uh, Recruiters Live Lounge concept, if you're not, where have you been living in a cave? Uh, get over to RecruitersLiveLounge.com. Um, I interview um, some of the most inspirational, I would argue, the most inspirational uh, recruitment leaders on the planet. You know, people like uh, people like Alex Raubacek, people like Russell Clemens, Dan McGuire, and Swain. Uh, but not just, you know, people like that. I, I talk to people that are really kicking it that maybe don't have a, a profile outside their niche. Within their niche, they're really, really known very, very well or within their local market. But outside that, in the general recruitment population, people don't know them. And these are people that inspire me. Now, just by associating with those people, I can't tell you, you know, it's like more people want to be. I mean, I get asked to, you know, say, Roy, could you come and interview me for, for, for Recruiters Live Lounge? I want to be in the Live Lounge. And that's a lovely, lovely position to be in, okay? If you associate with success, other people will associate success with you. And that's a really, really good thing to do. A um, couple of final points. Number 10, gather testimonials and endorsements. 
what I'm saying here is it's one thing for you to turn around or me to turn around and go, oh, I'm an expert, I'm a guru, it's my specialist subject. If you can get somebody else saying that about you, by a third party saying, this person is amazing, um, she gets results. These are the results I got within my business. She's helped me grow my business by the acquisition of talent. Um, uh, this guy has placed me and managed my entire career for the last four moves. This guy has, I don't know, got me salary increases of uh, over $150,000 over the last five years, whatever it is. That type of thing, that testimonial, that endorsement, uh, is is priceless, absolutely priceless. Now, look, some uh, dear people will be kind enough to send you unsolicited testimonials. You know, I, you know the kind. They'll just go, oh, you know, yeah, this person's really good, and we love those people, right? People that do it on LinkedIn where they endorse me and they write nice stuff. I love that. I absolutely love that. But there's hundreds more, me thousands more, waiting to praise you if you would only ask. So ask. I'm telling you, be proactive about it. Send an email out to your lists, uh, to, you know, to your clients and to your uh, candidates, asking them about the impact that you know your work has had on them. So if you've just placed somebody, uh, you know, maybe set up a kind of an autoresponder, but write to every client and say, look, I just want to check in with you six months down the line. What impact has the candidate that I introduced six months ago? How much, what impact have they had on your business this year, this last six months? Uh, you know, last year, the year before, whatever it is, what impact have they had? Those become sound bites that you can use, okay? Ask them to offer an endorsement of your expertise. People want to do that. Just ask. Just ask. Um, social proof, as I said earlier, is, is among the most, I would argue, actually the most powerful expert trigger. But instead of waiting for it to fall in your lap, I want you to take a proactive role and gather as many honest and compelling testimonials as you can. Massive, massive tip and takeaway on that one. Get video. Get video. It's the medium, okay? When you can get someone on video saying, you, this person is brilliant. This person has done this. I've grown my business because of this person. A video is going to be absolutely brilliant because it's easy to consume. People like video. And as importantly, search engines love video. All right. Just do it. <laughs> if you need any more convincing, call me up. I'll talk to you about it. Step 11, create an organization or a movement. The creators of organizations, summits, conferences, webinars, seminars, whatever, they've forever been granted instant authority. We subconsciously assume that the person behind that must have the approval and respect of the industry. Otherwise, they wouldn't have succeeded in pulling it off. So, you know, what could you create? It's like create a, a webinar, create a webinar series. One of my clients, she does a series of breakfast webinars for her industry. Very, very niche, right? I'll be honest, she doesn't get masses of people kind of registering or attending, um, but she doesn't need masses. So, you know, I might put on a webinar and, and, you know, my intention is I just want to get out there to as many recruiters as possible. And often I'm oversubscribed. And that's great because there are that many recruiters out there. In her market, it's so, so niche that, you know what, if she had seven of the very top people within our industry, decision makers within our industry, turn up for that webinar. They don't have to leave their office. They're doing it in the way that you and I are consuming this right now. If she can get five to seven of these highly influential characters on her webinars, then she's doing something. So that's really, really targeted positioning of herself as an expert. Now, people ask me, yeah, but Roy, what will I say? You know, I, I don't want to go on a webinar. Well, what she does is she finds, and she, you know, they're her candidates, they're her clients, the, the most senior, most influential, and she interviews them. So she's kind of like the facilitator. And that's the kind of, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, saying, hey, I'm the authority or the expert, or whatever, the facilitator is a really good character to be because just by you bringing the right people to your audience, you're seen as an expertise. Remember, they associate success with successful people. 
So put these things on, organize these things, you'll be seen as uh, an authority. Remember on these things, I said to you, it's like if you don't know how to do a webinar, don't worry, I'll show you. I'll tell you what equipment that you need, whether it's a webcam or a microphone, I'll tell you what software to use. Uh, I'll teach you stuff where you know you don't have to spend money to do a webinar, I'll teach you stuff. Okay, if you had this budget, this is what you could do. I'll show you this stuff if that's what you need to do. Just pick one and go with it and I'll help you. The final piece of advice that I want to give you is probably for me one of the most important pieces of advice, and that is look the part. All right. Now, I don't expect you to turn up looking like James Bond in a Bryony suit, uh, you know, sporting your what is it, a water PPK or something? I don't know. Um, I don't expect you to do that. Uh, yeah, I don't expect you to do that. As he looks fabulous, doesn't he? Really, really good. I wish I, I wish I looked that great in a suit. Um, but what I do want you to do is dress one notch up from the way that your clients and candidates dress. Now that's different, isn't it? It's different to the advice that most people tell you. They go, "Oh well, you know, dressing the style of the clients. If the clients casual, you be casual." Uh, dressing the style of your candidates. If your you know candidates suited and booted, I want you to wear a suit. I'm telling you that's good, but go up a level. All right. If you want to be perceived as an expert, you need to go up a level. It gives you the visual appearance of a solution-based expert who knows the importance of respect and image. So if your prospect wears a tie, you know, wear a tie, but make your tie look a million dollars, all right, even if it doesn't cost that much. Um, if they're wearing a suit, very least a comparable suit, but dress up. If it's casual, nothing wrong with casual. You know, some of you I know work, wear mar sorry, are working markets where if you turn up in a suit, it'd just be the absolute, you know, antithesis of what you want to be trying to achieve. But if your market is casual, I don't care. It's like your candidates are all sporting Megadeth T-shirts with lank hair down to their ankles, covering, uh, carrying bits of uh, computer hardware under their arms. I don't want you to look the same. You know, wear a, I don't know, what would be upmarket from a Megadeth T-shirt? I don't know, a clean Megadeth T-shirt. But you know what I'm saying, just dress, dress one notch up. And, you know, let's take a leaf out of uh, Senior Bond. Um, you know, small things can distinguish you, whether you're a man or a woman. Things like pens. My pet, hey, it was an MD that I used to work for, and he used to just chew the end of a Bic Biro, that really cheap Bic. Now, this was the MD of a recruitment business, you know, a business that I was involved in. And um, it was terrible because it was just, it was all, and you know what, the, the pen would be left on the desk. So of course, you'd be scrabbling around, pick up the first pens, like, oh, someone else has chewed this. If I, you know, I don't care if you're at the beginning of your career or, you know, it doesn't matter. In fact, let me tell you a story. A guy, a guy working for me called uh, Jess, uh, Jess came to me from Egon Zender. He was a re, re, res, resourcer. Yeah, he was a resourcer, a researcher, sorry, at Egon Zender. He joined me as a researcher. So this was um, somebody that would uh, make the initial, you know, kind of approach call to candidates, et cetera. Really, really valued member of my team. The thing about Jess was, and this is why I picked Bond, Jess looked like Bond. He, you know, in fact, he was taller than Daniel Craig. He's out of recruitment now. You'd be pleased to know he, uh, he, he's working with the City of London Police and doing very, very well. He looks like a copper. He's tall. He's handsome. He wears impeccable suits. His shoes were always polished, polished, polished. He looked better than me when he was going out on these client meetings. So, in fact, I didn't need to take him to every meeting. I did take him to every meeting because he looked so good and clients were really impressed with him. They'd often mistake him for the senior and me perhaps for the junior head of research, but I didn't care as long as we got it signed up. But I want you to take a leaf out of Jess's book and you know James Bond's book. Position yourself as a trusted advisor by working, not just looking good, but working longer, smarter, harder than your competitors. You are the two to five percent, remember? Your clients and candidates will appreciate the effort and you'll see the results as you make more placements. I promise you that will happen. Okay, now listen, we've reached the end of today and I just wanna do a final couple of things for you. First of all, thank you for joining me. Pat yourself on the back, give yourself a massive pat on the back. 
for taking the time to invest in yourself, your learning, and your future success today. I think that commands respect. Command, you know, you should congratulate yourself. Get into the Facebook page. Any questions on this presentation? Uh, any comments following, uh, you know, this training, I'll aim to get back to you directly via that Facebook page. So do that. In two weeks' time, you're going to have the live Q&A. So you can ask me any questions on this particular topic or, in fact, any recruitment challenge that you're currently facing, okay? Now, before I let you go, I've got one thing that I'm going to ask you to do. So one action. So please, please write this down. What is the one thing that you could do today? When? Today. What's the one thing that you could do today to better position yourself as an expert within your niche? Now, here's a big clue. Go back and watch this again or reread your notes from this session and pick one. Pick one of the how-tos that I showed you of the 12. Pick one and then turn around and say, you know what? This is the one that I'm going to focus in on. Whether it's public speaking, whether it's media spotlight, whether it's I know your expert story, whatever it is, pick one and take one action today to advance on that. Okay. No excuses. I'm going to check in with you on that Q and a session. I'm going to check with you to see what you've done. So don't let yourselves down. Please don't let me down. I'm looking forward to hearing from you then until I see you again. Remember work hard on your recruitment business, not just be busy working in it and make a difference in the lives of your clients, your candidates, and your colleagues. I'll see you soon. Take care.